Greetings. Have you ever asked yourself this question, why me? Which sort of precludes why not somebody else? Yeah, I've asked that. I can remember having that stroke and I was laying there in the hospital paralyzed. I was thinking, why me? Yeah, it just didn't make any sense in the moment. Well, that's not an unusual question to ask. If you go back to John chapter nine, you have this narrative which addresses this topic, why me? So if you, it begins with these words. Now, Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. Think about it, blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. Think about that response. Now, the disciples they had a typical understanding. Somebody messed up. Bad things happen to people that mess up. Either this man or his parents messed up. Now remember, the man had been blind from birth. So it couldn't have been him, right? What does Jesus say? Neither. He said this man was blind from birth so that the works of God could be revealed through him. In other words, God was saying, uh, that this man is blind so the works of God could be revealed through his life. Sometimes things happen to people because God's preparing them or someone else for something awesome. Now, it doesn't seem right in the scales of justice that this man would, would be blind from birth in the first place. But he was blind from birth so that Jesus could be glorified, so that his works could be revealed. And so if you read on in the story, Jesus tells him to go, you know, put some, some mud on his eyes, tells him to go wash his eyes in the pool of Siloam, and he's completely healed. He's completely healed. So think about it right there for a moment. The man was blind from birth, so in a moment, Jesus later could heal his eyes to reveal who Jesus was as the Son of God. Now, you and I may say, wait a minute, that doesn't seem fair to the man that was born blind. Look, God has created Paul Teske. I belong to God. He's the pot maker, I'm the pot. He makes me any way he wants to. He does with me anything he wants to. The, think about it, the china in your cupboard doesn't get a vote on what you do with it, how you treat it, how you use it, whether you keep it or dispose of it. We belong to God. He's the creator of the universe. And however God wants to use my life or the life of this blind man to his glory and honor, that's God's call. That's God's call. Think about that for a moment. Now, when God shows up, it's always going to be disruptive. This man, first of all, you know, he goes to the, the, the Pharisees to show himself and they, they scold him. Uh, they reject him because they, they don't believe that this is from God. They call his parents in. His parents say, we don't know, maybe it's not our son you're talking about. I mean, they didn't want to get involved either. The parents didn't want to get involved. The people around him, his, his community, they didn't want to get involved. Just read the story. So here's this blind man from birth, gets his sight through this guy named Jesus. He didn't even know who it is because he's blind when he goes and washes himself. And then he comes back and he's sitting there. Jesus comes along later and says, how are you doing? He says, well, not too good. I can see, but you know, it's my family's upset. My friends have cast me out. The church has kicked me out. Stop for a moment. Let me say this to you. When Jesus shows up in your life, it's going to always be disruptive. It's going to change the way things have been. It's going to be a new normal for you. But God doesn't do anything that he's not preparing you for in advance. When I had the stroke and I eventually get healed, God, that was my new normal, moving in a healing ministry, which was completely foreign to the church body I came out of. But God didn't say, hey, would you want to do this? No, he didn't give me a vote. He, I had a stroke, I get healed, I'm given a healing ministry. The blind man's blind, he gets his eyesight, he goes through some difficulty, but at the end, he says, who did this? And Jesus said, I did, the Son of God. And he comes into a relationship with Jesus. Now, what's important to us in this story is we don't even know this guy's name. But for 2,000 years, his story has spoken to the lives of many millions of people who've read this narrative. It's given them hope. 
to understand the power of God is, is reserved for God's creation, even now. God used this man, whose name we don't know, to do a mighty work to reveal the power of God even then and there to the Pharisees and even today, 2,000 years later to us. You understand? Why me? Because God's got a plan. Why me? God's grace is sufficient. Why me? He'll never test me beyond the capacity of my faith to deal with something. Why me? Because he said, I'm going to use you for such a time as this. Look, I think it was a great honor that God chose this man to be blind and later to heal his eyes so he could make an ongoing statement to the glory and power of God through Jesus Christ. I, I count it a blessing that God chose to use me to break me in such a public way, speaking in, in front of 200 men when I had that stroke and get carted off to the hospital in an ambulance, only to leave in a walker in a wheelchair two weeks later, but then a week later be completely healed and given a healing ministry by God through the, the, the pastor of the service I was attending. You understand? Why me? Because God's had a plan. And look, if my short life is going to serve the Lord and he calls me to heaven, so be it. Let me say the good thing about heaven. It's eternal. It's forever. It's free of the sorrow and the pain and the suffering we, we know here. So whatever trials and tribulations you and I have to endure on this side of the grave don't mean anything compared to the great life God's going to give us in the, in the world yet to come forever and ever and ever. There'll be no end to that. This blind man is waiting for us to come so he can just understand the impact his life made on people like us 2,000 years later. I hope this is resonating in your spirit. And the next time you, you ask the question, why me? I want you to say, Lord, what do you want me to learn from this? What do you want me to do with it? How can I glorify your name? And, and remember this, whether we live or die, we're with God. Whether we live or die, we're with God. That's important to understand. Death for us is not a separation, but it's an eternal walk with God on the other side of that natural death. We have eternal life. Look, don't ask the question, why me? I want you to change it. The next time something happens to you, I want to say, Lord, what do you want me to learn from this? What do you want me to do with it? Because I know you've got your hands all over this. You're the living God, and he will sustain you. He will, he will equip you. He will, he will give you all the grace sufficient until the day he brings you home. Amen? Look, I hope this has been helpful. I, I want you to see the Bible narratives in a different way. Not in, through the eyes of a pity party, but with, through the eyes of great expectation and hopefulness uh, and excitement of serving God whenever and however he wants to use us. For we are his and he is our Lord. Amen? He's our Lord. Look, reach out to me. Hit your comment button right now. I, I want to hear it. I'll respond to it. If you want to send me a prayer request, go to my website, paulteskinministries.com. Hit the prayer button. I will answer your, your prayer request. I'm here for you to encourage you and to lift you up. Okay? And I want you to go in peace. And I want you to serve the Lord. Amen? And all God's people said, amen.